Good evening, members of council, ladies and gentlemen, staff. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Council for Monday, August 25th, 2014, to order. We will begin with an invocation led by Councillor Papp, followed by the singing of the national anthem, and I would ask all who are able to rise. <coughs> Please let us, bow, <coughs> let us bow our heads. Lord, give us this day your strength and courage to do your will. Grant that the members of Pelham Council demonstrate humility, listen with an open mind, and show wisdom in all their deliberations and matters of business placed before them. Bring to this council honor, trust, dignity to work on the behalf of all of the people of the town of Pelham. Amen. Amen. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patron of, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free, from far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee, God keep our land. Glorious and free, O Canada, we stand on guard for Thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for Thee. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Papp. Thank you all. First on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. It's been moved by Councilor Ribiak, seconded by Councilor Durley, that the agenda for the August 25th, 2014 regular meeting of council be adopted. Are there any changes to the agenda? I would propose one change, and that is we don't think that the first presenter is here, and perhaps we can defer that until our uh, our uh, September 2nd meeting. Councilor Papp, would you make that motion that we... Uh, I would absolutely, Mr. Okay. Mayor. And Councilor Lane, would you second that? And then we would ask them to come to the September 2nd meeting. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion's carried. Any other changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question on the, on the amended agenda. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. That is, any <coughs> conflicts of interest? Do any members have any conflicts of interest they need to disclose at this time? <coughs> Not Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Can that be so noted in the minutes? Thank you very much. We will begin with presentations. We have one, and it uh, is regarding the Lookout Point 1000 Ball Challenge. We have JJ here with us this evening. If you could join us at the podium. JJ, introduce yourselves uh, and your colleague to council, and uh, then give us your presentation, please. Absolutely. Uh, first of all, uh, that's Dave Swib with me here. Uh, he's uh, my right-hand man, so I had to bring him along with me. Uh, my name's JJ Alexander. Um, would you rather me to sit or stand? Standing is perfect if you're perfect. comfortable. I'd rather if that's Thank okay you. with all of you. Uh, my name is Jay Alexander. I'm the uh, head golf professional at Lico Point uh, Country Club. Um, I've been there now for uh, 15 years, uh, the head pro for the last uh, uh, four years. Um, to Mary Dave Augustine and, and members of council, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity today uh, to speak to you about the uh, Thousand Ball Challenge that is being held at Lico Point uh, Monday, September 1st uh, of this year. Um, I'd first like to commend the Mayor and the members of Council uh, on your leadership role providing Wellspring the opportunity to build in Fawn Hill. Wellspring provides a service that is helping so many people at such difficult times while they fight cancer and is desperately needed in our community. This is our second annual Thousand Ball Challenge at, at Lookout Point Country Club and uh, last year was in support uh, of a dear friend of mine, uh, a member of Lookout Point, a lady by the name of Carol Smith. Uh, we were able to raise uh, through the Thousand Ball Challenge over $8,000 for Carol Smith and her family. Uh, unfortunately, um, on Tuesday, July 2nd, we lost Carol Smith to cancer. Um, it was very hard for all of us, and it's been very hard to the family. And uh, I feel, and I think all of the community of Fawn Hill should feel, that uh, we, we should take great pride in being able to give them comfort through such a difficult time by, by being able to take away the financial burden that they were going through uh, through her fight with cancer. Uh, it allowed the family to be closer. It allowed them to spend more quality time together. 
And I think that's what it's all about when people uh, in our community are fighting such a horrible disease. Mayor Dave has been supportive in this event. Uh, he actually came out last year and hit a few balls uh, alongside me last year. Um, we're going to make a couple changes to that this year, Mayor Dave. We're going to clear the entire right side of the driving range. <laughs> <laughs> we had him going this direction, but uh, the mayor was going this direction. So we promise you, uh, we hope that you do come, uh, and a couple changes to the setup to. have been made uh, to give you a little bit more space to, to like. You're handing out helmets, are you? Uh, <laughs> it's an option for people. Uh, uh, you know, health and safety is big at Lacoe Point, so we're going to make sure everything is, is set up. Um, the details of the event, uh, for you that uh, might not know, uh, it is being held on Monday, September 1st. Uh, I will hit my first ball uh, at 7 a.m. Uh, last year, it took me about eight hours to hit uh, 1,000 golf balls. Um, I don't know for those who don't know anything about golf, but those do. It's equivalent to uh, about 20 rounds of golf, uh, 20 swings of golf in one day, uh, minus the walk. About five rounds for me. <laughs> for about five rounds for me, there you go. Uh, for, for the average player, sorry, so for about 20 rounds for the average player. So, so uh, compared to what these people are doing, uh, fighting cancer and all that, it's absolutely nothing. Um, but it is, it is a good challenge as well uh, for myself, for sure. Um, the golf balls are being sold at $5 a piece, uh, which hopefully we raise $5,000 that way. Uh, from 12 to 3, we'll be running a barbecue uh, for a membership as well as the public. Uh, Mayor Dave, I hope you're going to be there, and I'd like to invite all of council. Uh, if you have time that day to come by and uh, and support the event as well. So I'm going to challenge him to see who can hit it the farthest. That's what I was hoping for. Let's do it. Um, we were, the, the, the community's been great. Uh, Sobe ha has jumped on board. A couple other businesses have jumped on board. Uh, Accelerated Health is our, is our top sponsor, our major sponsor. Uh, they've bought a large sum of balls. Uh, they've donated massages and, and, and a bunch of other prizes that we'll be giving over the course of the day. Um, for any ball that I do sink, uh, there will be those people that have bought those numbered balls will be put into a draw for $500 cash. Last year I didn't sink one, so we have a backup plan. And uh, if I don't sink one this year, uh, they'll just go into one of the uh, the daily prizes as well. So we've we've got all the bases covered this year, but I, I hope to sink one this year. I've asked our superintendent to make the hole maybe a little bit bigger for me, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, this is in support of Wellspring, uh, obviously, as everybody knows. Um, a little bit about Wellspring. Um, <coughs> it's fabulous. Uh, not only what it does for the cancer, the, the patient, but what it does for the family. Uh, I'm a cancer survivor myself. Uh, I've been cancer free now for three years. Uh, and I was lucky enough to have Wellspring through my fight, um, not only for myself, but for my family. Um, what is the hardest thing not for a cancer patient is not necessarily what you're going through, but what you see your family going through. And that's where I have my hat off to Wellspring, and that's why I'm very, very excited that they're going to be coming closer to home, that there's people that all of us know that will have the opportunity to get this top-notch care in their back door. Um, their programs uh, and their their commitment and their their community uh, support is endless and they're recognized by Health Canada as one of the top cancer survivors that we have today. So kudos to all of you uh, and kudos to Lico Point uh, for this continued support on this fight, this awful fight um, mm. that we are all a part of. Uh, in conclusion, I'd just like to thank uh, all the members of Lucko Point, uh, my management team, and our general manager, Rich Merlino, who is a leader in continuing to find ways for Lucko Point to give back to our community. Also, like to thank Accelerated Health for being a major sponsor of the event, and also uh, Steve Christie, who is the head golf professional of Peninsula Lakes, and Chris Paluski, who is the head golf professional of uh, Sparrow Lakes. Uh, I've mentioned to them what I'm doing this year, uh, and they've jumped on board, and they're selling uh, additional balls at both their golf courses. And they're going to come and visit over the course of the day while I'm hitting these golf balls. And they're going to hit some balls as well and raise a little <coughs> bit more money. Um, last but not like, but least, I, I'd like to recognize Dave Swib and uh, Carly Duva, um, who's not here with us tonight. Uh, but they've been putting all the hard work into to this event, um, selling the golf balls, advertising. Uh, all I do is hit them. Uh, there's a lot of people around that, that make, uh, make it possible, and, and they should be recognized. And again, I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'd be more than glad to, to answer them.
Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Alexander. And uh, thank you for, for leading this and, and being the, the pro that will uh, lead our community through this thousand ball challenge. I wonder if members of council have any questions for you. Councilor Durling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. JJ, where do we go to buy these balls? Um, they are being sold here at the, at, at, in somewhere in, I'm not sure exactly what facility it's coming out of in here, but it's, they're being sold here. Uh, they are also being sold at Wellspring. Uh, you can you can buy them online, or you can phone them by um, you can call them by phone and buy them there. And also at Lacote Point, we'll be selling them there. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I'm going to ask the treasurer maybe to just. They are being sold. They're here being at the sold front right desk. at the front counter here, uh, so uh, the council is well, uh, welcome you. to get them. Okay. Thank you. Others, other members of council. All right. We look forward to this challenge. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, look forward to being part of it. I'll try and practice my swing up a little bit to try and maybe sink one of those balls uh, in the hole. That would help. In the hole. Okay. <laughs> I'll put one over there for it. On the other side of it. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much, JJ. Thank you very really much. appreciate your leadership on this, and thank you as well for sharing. I was unaware that you were a member of uh, Wellspring and received care there. So thank you as well for sharing that with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. We look forward to seeing you on the on the first. Thank Thanks so much. much. Take thank care. You. Thank you. Those are our presentations this evening. We look look forward to the thousand ball challenge, uh, <clears throat> and I'm very pleased that we are selling some of the balls here at the counter, and I, and uh, maybe they can be available in other ways as well. Uh, ne next, we move, there are no uh, other delegations or the report of the regional councillor uh, councillor Beatty, because we are just now I think next week starting into our regional rotation again. We took a, a few weeks off in uh, in August for um, regional meetings. Uh, so now we move to adoption of minutes. It's been moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Durley. The following minutes be adopted as printed, circulated, and read. The mi minutes of the regular meeting of Council of August 5th and of the special meeting of Council of August 8th. Are there any errors or omissions in those minutes? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is consent agenda items to be to be considered in block. Are there any items that members would like to lift for separate consideration? It's been moved by Councillor Lane, second by Councillor King. The following consent agenda <coughs> items be received and the recommendations contained therein be approved as applicable. Recommendations of Committee of the Whole of our meeting of August 5th, minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of July 21st. Is that right? Um, staff reports of a routine nature. So it should be August 5th. Uh, sorry, staff reports of routine nature for information. There aren't any. Uh, action correspondence of routine nature. Um, D. E. D'Antonio regarding the Center Street and Metler Road site lines. And the recommendation is that uh, the correspondence from Eugene D'Antonio be received and referred to the Director of Public Works and Utilities for remedy. Then we have information correspondence items, Ministry of Agricultural, Food and Rural Affairs regarding drainage superintendent. Uh, congratulations to our drainage superintendent. Um, a letter from uh, Betty Bond regarding uh, planning report AM0914. Uh, correspondence from the City of Port Colborne regarding the increase in USA fees for ship inspections. Um, information regarding the introduction of the drain, drainage investment group. Um, information from the Niagara Escarpment Plan Amendment PC 20113. And correspondence from McMaster University Department of Family Medicine. A thank you for that. And finally, minutes. We have the Heritage Pelham Advisory Committee minutes of June 19th. Discussion on any of those items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, draw some attention to Article 11.5.2, the letter from Mrs. Bond. Uh, I did, because my name is mentioned here, and uh, I did take a drive and I did have a look on the ground at the situation as it exists. I also have a copy of the of the map, which looks wonderful. However, when you're standing in Mrs. Bond's backyard looking at the bottom of that bulb where the street is, there's really not a lot of room between her fence and that. And with the narrow frontage on that lot, the house is going to have to be set back in order to achieve side yard uh, clearances. So I, I'm looking at if, in fact, uh, the, the request that he 
uh, Mr. Lucetta brought forward at the public meeting a week or so ago mm -hmm. uh, to have extensions for these decks and that. I would like to look at this lot in particular that uh, nothing be allowed to go any further than what is there now because really uh, looking at it, I I've just get the feeling that it's going to be, if there is an extension because of the layout and the setup of that particular lot, that the uh, it's going to almost encroach upon her backyard, her property there. And I uh, just I'd like to, uh, again, add this to the mix of the things that will be included in the report when it does come to council. If, okay. if that's okay. Thank you, Councilor Gurley. We're going to just get a response from uh, Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover? Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, of course, we will look at that uh, concern and, uh, and itemize it in the report. <clears throat> we have uh, since gone through a, a study of all these side, the rear yard setbacks as well as variances, et cetera, that have been given all around the, the outskirts of that property, trying to be fair to both the applicant, what is requested, and the neighborhood of what exists, what's existing, as well as the tolerance of what's being permitted uh, through plan approvals. And the applicant has agreed to to limit the requested um, in encroachments uh, to that of the average uh, planning approval of the area. So it will match what's existing on the neighboring properties. Oh, very good. So, so we will include that in the report. We will include the, uh, the impacts of this property specifically, and uh, we'll give you a recommendation hopefully uh, next meeting. Okay, thank you. Councilor Drew. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Glover. I'm very pleased with the, the work that you are doing in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Glover. Others? Councilor Rubiak? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm looking at uh, <coughs> item 1141, action correspondence of a routine nature, mm -hmm. the request to look at sight lines on that particular corner. Now, I didn't lift this because I'm not looking for any, any different uh, uh, outcome than the one that suggested the motion, <coughs> but I am curious to know why this letter is, is here. And I ask that because I know that I've received... Uh, um, observations, perhaps even complaints from residents about particular corners, and I've utilized the PSR system, which seems to be the program that we put in place specifically to receive these kinds of complaints and to get a response from, from Public Works. I think if I'd known that, that the way to do it is to, is to have someone write a, a letter to Council to have us look at it, then, then perhaps I might have done that, because I know that the particular PSR I'm talking about hasn't been been completed yet. So I'm really wondering, really as a matter of process, mm -hmm. as a matter of protocol, uh, whether whether something like this should should appear here or should people be directed to use the PSR and, and, and allow us to use the system that we put in place to respond to, to residents. Okay, thank you. I think uh, first off, this is here. I received it in email uh, and you've received my response. Mm -hmm. um, this was unsolicited. I didn't talk to this person prior to the email or anything like that. So, but I have, as I said in the response, noticed that some difficulty in that corner and others actually in the area have spoken to me about it. Um, so I suggested that it come here and the clerk uh, added it to the agenda. Uh, Mr. CAO, in terms of, um, or, or Mr. Mantle, I, in terms of the PSR, um, maybe you can provide some, some guidance to council on that and then answer the councillor's question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would encourage councillors to use the PSR system. I, I think that's the preferred route for us. Um, it also allows council to track uh, what the actions are of staff and then uh, to know which staff person has the file or whether or not it's been completed, etc. So that would be our preferred, uh, preferred method. Okay. Thank you. So point taken. I, I just, I, I think I included it here. It seemed to me that it was a bit bigger than a public service request of a routine nature. So it's more, maybe a little bit bigger. So anyways, council. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I appreciate that, that this is a, kind of a special case because I took a look at that myself and I recognize that there's probably some engineering work that needs to go into that rather than just some, some grass cutting. It's really a, a question about what should we be saying to our residents? What should we be doing? Under what circumstances is it more appropriate for someone to send a letter to <laughs> to the mayor as opposed to council, uh, yeah. so so I think the, an the the question has been answered. We, <clears throat> we prefer to use the PSR, and I would think that for the, the sake of the credibility of the PSR, that if we use it and respond to it and not make end runs around it, then it, it might have greater effect. But 
Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Councillor. Others, uh, any of the other items on the uh, correspondence? Councillor Gurley. Yes, I have one more. The 11.5.7.1, uh, the minutes from the Heritage Committee. Uh, many of the concerns that were brought forward at that meeting were addressed this past Thursday, and I give uh, sincere thanks to Mr. Glover, our clerk Nancy, and uh, Julie Hanna, staff that were present there and really dealt with many of the issues that were brought forward. And you'll see from the minutes of that meeting that there is some resolution that uh, is highly desirable and will help that committee work a lot better. And uh, uh, credit to staff for the excellent job they did that evening. Thank you very much, Councillor, for your comments. And we look forward to uh, seeing that resolution coming to Council. Uh, the the uh, the item I'd like to raise is is just the the information regarding the Niagara Escarpment Plan Amendment. Um, so this this is brought to us. I guess we're part of the circulation of this. Um, what are the next steps, Mr. Glover? They were sort of looking for a response. Uh, I know we're simply council simply receiving this. But is there any feedback that we're going to be providing, or how how does that? How do we move forward, Mr. Glover? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I've read the the uh, um, proposed amendment. Uh, I had no concerns with it. I think it's it's a good amendment. I think it's a timely amendment. Um, I, I was not going to prepare a report or response to the council for council's uh, response to this because I don't think we need to comment on it. I think it, it, it is good. Other municipalities may comment on improvements that they see, um, but currently I, I don't see any. I don't think there needs to be a response on that. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. I appreciate it. Anything further on the consent agenda items? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is my report. <coughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity to provide the report. Uh, you have it there in written form. <coughs> Um, I think the item that I did want to highlight was uh, information regarding the Association of Municipalities of Ontario Conference, which was in London this year, not Ottawa. Um, so along with uh, Councillors uh, King and Pap and our CAO, I had the pleasure of attending the 115th Annual Association of Municipalities of Ontario Conference in London. The theme of the conference was, for, or was at the forefront and there were more than uh, 1,200 delegates from municipalities across Ontario. And it was great to, uh, to work together with them, not only in the sessions, but also in some of the social aspects of it, uh, whether it was uh, singing on stage with them at <laughs> an event <laughs> or just uh, talking over the lunch hour. Um, one of the things that we, that we do at AMO, in addition to the various um, sessions that we had, um, ones that stand out include healthy communities by design or local service corporations or billing changes for communities with OPP or the annual human resources update. Um, in addition to that, we do meet as a group uh, and do what are called delegations directly to ministers or ministries. Um, so we did meet with uh, Lou Rinaldi, the um, parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And uh, we talked about some of the issues that we spoke about, we've spoke we spoken about at this table, which includes uh, uh, changes to the Greenbelt Plan, including Ridgeville as a hamlet, and also uh, the construction of fire halls in the Greenbelt, which are not currently allowed. And then also uh, we suggested proposed uh, improvements to the Ontario Municipal Board and the interaction between the town and the OMB, um, that planning should be less reactive and more proactive that we work together with the province as opposed to them appealing our plans at the last minute and then trying to nuance the language uh, later on. And then we also suggested a better triage system uh, to deal with appeals uh, earlier and quicker. We also met with the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Affairs, Arthur Potts. Um, they're our liaison with, with the government, especially when it comes to things like um, funding. And they were our liaison as we worked our way through the uh, stimulus grants a number of years ago and we were very, very successful with that. We wanted to update them and we did regarding the poten potential multifaceted community centre and the need for provincial funding uh, and other funding for us to perceive, uh, proceed in that way. Uh, we spoke to Catherine McGarry, MPP and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Transportation. 
just wanted to tell them a little bit about what's being uh, proposed in the East Vaughan Hill development and specifically the public square and the road design in the in that area uh, and they were quite intrigued actually I saw them at the government um, reception later on and they were still talking about it so they're very very enthusiastic about it and then we also spoke about something that uh, this council spoke about uh, at the top of the year and was we were going through a strategic planning um, increased the, the, the potential for increased wayfinding signage for Pelham and I think they gave a lead to the CAO to follow up on that. We also met with Eleanor McMahon, Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Natural Resources. Council will recall uh, Ms. McMahon as she was formerly the head of uh, Bike Friendly Ontario, Cycle Friendly Ontario and was recently elected in the last provincial election. So um, it was great to see her and express appreciation for the protection of the Fawn Hill Came regarding the area of natural and scientific interest and that we asked uh, that those protections remain uh, for many, many years to come. And then I also had the pleasure of attending along with uh, ten, uh, nine other mayors and the regional chair in Niagara with the <coughs> Minister of uh, Transportation, St uh, Stephen Del Duca, not Del Buca, I apologize in my report, Del Duca. Uh, regarding the rationale for the extension of GO Transit uh, commuter rail service to Niagara Region and um, Mr. Er, Minister Del Duca was uh, interested and said he would get back to us so nothing further on that but I'll certainly keep you apprised of that and uh, that is something the Council has approved at this table. Are there any other um, comments from Councillors King or Councillors Papp that you'd like to add on to the AMO uh, Emo report. Councillor Pat, mm -hmm. you want to add anything on to the Emo report? Uh, I'll, uh, yes, I do. But uh, Councillor King, same thing. Councillor King, not the uh, since he mentioned I'm going on tour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wait for the video. Um, <laughs> video? As a <laughs> First time attendee of AMO, I found it um, extremely beneficial in terms of having the opportunity to um, partake in the delegations and meet with the ministers. Um, it was an amazing opportunity for networking, but at the same time, I think that it really um, hit home all of the good that we are doing in Pelham. So those would be my comments. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Todd? Sure. Uh, it was my pleasure again. I've been there several times and it uh, was, uh, as always, uh, enlightening and lots of fun. But there's a couple of things that I think, um, well, that we will share with you, uh, with staff and I think the CAO. Uh, I attended the HR update and there are three changes coming up to the Employment Standards Act that we revolve around child care. And I'm not going to deliberate, just that I would suggest that uh, we get the presentation from Hicks Morley because it's going to have an impact on how we go about um, giving our staff, or well, particularly the staff, it, what they consider to be different types of childcare leave, including ones that I was kind of somewhat, it was, uh, it was uh, how can I say, very hard to listen to, but there is going to be a, a movement towards offering families whose children have disappeared or died. This is coming through the federal government, and there's another one where uh, there's family caregiver. They're expanding, you know, what was happening, and also the interesting definitions. Uh, I have to tell you, I was amazed. There is a motion before the the uh, legislation to redefine the family and what that means. So this will have, I'm sure, I know you're nodding heads. It'll have a, a major impact on, like, who exactly is a family. And I just sat there, in my ear, and I'm thinking, oh boy, this is going to be different, and how people apply to us for leaves of absence. Or, so that's something that is uh, articulated in the Hicks Morley report. The other thing, quickly, and I think all of us were uh, fascinated by Nick Nanos. Mm -hmm. He did the incredible overview of what happened in the provincial election and this guy's got his pulse on how people think, act and react to certain political and it was an interesting <coughs> discussion you should. Amanda Lang from the CBC was amazing about discussing how our world is changing and I liked some of her comments about that in some cases we t need to uh, totally re-examine our education system and what's happening, that we've lost our ability to uh, explore upon that and I know Darren, myself and some of those of us who were there. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think for me, well, I think for all of us, 
What can you say about someone who's been the mayor, the longest standing mayor in North America, and they did an interview with Hazel McCallion? And I think if there was any message that she gave to all of us, it's just incredible when you <coughs> listen to her. And by the way, folks, she drove from Mississauga to London at 93 years old. And what she gave us was that all of the, that she stayed in local municipal politics, and my God, she could have been an MP, MPP anytime she wanted. And she basically said that this was where her heart and the work is, which just resonated throughout the whole crowd. They all said, the reason that we do this work is not for, I mean, they think it's for money, but when you really look at it, and she's so inspiring, and I love how she said, never, ever, ever give up. No matter what that we're working on, both federal and provincial policies that we continue. And I know the mayors, yourself, have been working to go transit and, and anything. Just don't give up. And uh, she was made an honorary member, mm -hmm. a lifetime member mm -hmm. of AMO, which has only happened, I think, Mr. Mayor, five, four or five times, as I can remember. And uh, she, uh, she left a message that she's actually, even though she's stepping down as mayor mm -hmm. and moving off, uh, she's not actually retiring that she'll be there in the shadows to help us with any fight and my god if there was anybody that's a formidable foe I don't want to tangle with her because she definitely knows and that was inspiring for those encouraging people particularly at this election time to run for office and come in and t take a chance of what is considered to be quite an exciting career so I, f I was just uh, very very touched by what she had to say so that and thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Council, for allowing us to attend. We had a great time, and it's not true. I am not going on a tour with a band. <laughs> Don't believe it. Anyhow, you that did, was, but you're back already. Yeah, but I'm back already. They didn't want me. <laughs> thank you very much, oh, Council. Oh, you're going to mention about the Kamoko? Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I could. Um, I will. Yeah. So, if you, if you, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say something, but that, but that was an interesting tour, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for your Thanks, reports so on uh, on EMO, and we'll be sure to perhaps get those uh, reports. I know that they're available on the EMO website, and we'll provide links to members of council that uh, Councillor Papp indicated. They, they they were very interesting, especially uh, Amanda Lang. You, you reminded me that uh, when she was talking about creativity in her book, The Power of Why, very similar to what we do here in the town with our creative problem solving process. So. It would be interesting to somehow connect with uh, Ms. Lang and uh, talk to her about that and creativity and innovation. Essentially asking that question, why, uh, which is a lot of what we do through the creative problem solving. So very good. Thank you. Uh, two other items in my report. The, uh, the first of those is that we did um, go through a, a, a center, the Kamoka Wellness and Recreation Complex, and a tour. So uh, since we were there, it's about 20 minutes outside of, uh, outside of London. Uh, very impressive uh, facility, $23. million center, includes a uh, twin NHL pad, uh, NHL size pad arena, one with 250 seats, one with 750, 10 dressing rooms. Some of them were kind of dual dressing rooms. You can either come in from this way or this rink or that rink, depending on, on how they're used. Uh, 4,000 square foot fitness center operated by the YMCA of Western Ontario, and that's why we went just to see because of the, con the discussion that we've been having here around the council table about uh, YMCA, um, a double gymnasium, several meeting rooms and activity rooms, and there were kids there that were using the gymnasium and having lunch, and they were running the programs uh, for the municipality there. Uh, they had a 115-meter walking track, uh, walking running track, a 7,000-square-foot library. It was quite, uh, quite large, quite beautiful, um, and really a new, a new type of library, new design. Few, few stacks. Lots of comfy chairs, uh, lots of tables to work at, um, free Wi-Fi and all those good things. Um, and also the interesting thing that was a bit of a bonus, they did have um, a rooftop solar array which uh, was able to transmit 250 kilowatts per hour at, at peak to uh, back to the grid. So that would help with their, with their costs. And a very innovative way in which they used the the heat from the arena, from the chillers, to was, work was on sure. the rest of uh, rest of the facility. So, uh, very, very informative, and uh, I think the the CAO is getting the information regarding the YMCA and and how they interacted together. So it was very. Good. We thought we'd take advantage of that since we're in the area. And then the final is uh, on Friday night. We had the outdoor movie night. 
so thanks to the Pelham Mayor's Youth Advisory Council for hosting that double feature, which showed Smurfs 2 and Now You See Me in Peace Park. Uh, we were able to raise, as a result of that, 15250 dollars uh, for the United Way of South Niagara. Um, <coughs> so that'll be a little bit of a kickoff to their campaign. So thanks again to the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council for putting that on. And uh, hopefully we can continue with the outdoor movie nights and spread the word and get more people involved in that. It's been moved by Councillor Durley, second by Councillor Ribiak, that Mayor Augustine's report for August 25th be received for information. Councillor Pat. Just uh, quickly, while we're uh, doing this, uh, just to pick up, next year's convention is going to be here in our backyard, Niagara Falls, and particularly when I'm thinking about our previous discussions, that we should actively, actively make an effort to showcase what we've done in Pelham and hopefully have uh, the ability to uh, put a seminar or some session on, because I think we've got a lot to offer, and <coughs> I think this is a golden opportunity. We're about a year away from planning. And I would encourage staff to, to, yeah. to move towards that. And, and we've, we also talked about yeah. the potential for some sort of study tour or yes. something like that. The construction will be over at that point in our community in terms of the major roadways. Um, so maybe that's something that we can, we can consider, Mr. Well, Thanks. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. That's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point that it is in Niagara Falls uh, <coughs> next year, and it's something that we have to look at to spread the word about the work that we're doing. Thank mm -hmm. you, Councillor. Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Ribiak, that the issue summary report recommendation for site plan approval SP0314 be received and that for reasons outlined in the issue summary report, Council approves the site plan application file number SP0314 for lands located at 156 Highway 20 West. And further that, Council approve the bylaw authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement between the town and the numbered company, which is 1898262 Ontario Inc., as presented on this evening's agenda. Questions, comments regarding that particular property? Looks like a great redevelopment. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? <coughs> opposed? That motion is carried. <coughs> Thank you. The next item has been moved by Council Ribiak, second by Council Durley that the issue summary report regarding the Junior B change room be received and that the purchase of the Junior B change room and installations costs totaling 96000 be approved. I'm just going to have the uh, CAO comment because there's additional information that we have uh, that is in the report, Mr. CAO. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's been some new information with regards to the change, change room facility uh, that Council had previously approved. Um, uh, first and foremost, we've understood now through our facilities coordinator that the power supply required to uh, run the uh, the trailer is not sufficient. We had thought that we had the appropriate power uh, from the arena. Uh, we'd put extra conduit in, and uh, we will require an upgrade from that. We'll obviously require some additional expense. Uh, secondly, we now understand that we do require an accessibility ramp, which is something that we have previously not thought was required um, that uh, is going to uh, create additional expense. Thirdly, and probably most significantly, the architectural proposals have come in to, uh, to our offices with regards to the uh, Community Center Design, Design Advisory Committee, uh, and all of those proposals are indicated that a project of this scope, if everything goes according to our current timeline, projected timelines, um, the earliest the doors would open is spring 2017. Uh, so when we calculated the difference between the lease rate and the purchase rate, uh, at the end of the day, there's only a, about a $4,000 difference in favor of leasing. However, if we were to purchase and spend the extra $4,000, uh, we're confident that at the, at the, if the new center opens that we would be able to sell uh, the existing trailer and recover in the order of about $50,000 of the expense, which I think is uh, um, a good business decision to make at this point. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. CEO, for that information. Members of Council, any questions, comments to the CEO, Councillor Durley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the, the cost through you, the 96000 we approved, is there additional funds that we need to add to that number for the uh, uh, the two things that, that were mentioned as far as the power upgrade and, and uh, no? 
it's all so that, the now. 96 that's being suggested includes those two items it's all the treasure. costs now that uh, I had uh, Kim uh, the facilities coordinator provide me with the upset limit of those costs and that's that number okay, okay. thank you thank you others Councilor Cobb did you want to say no something? I just we got to do it yeah I really yeah okay Councilor Ribiak thank you mr. mayor just just by way of reminder to this point we've Approved an expense for this year, I believe, in terms of renting. Mr. CEO? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. I believe it was in the order of $22,000. That was the expense <clears> for the lease rate for this this uh, calendar year, and then we would rebudget in 2015 for the remaining uh, amount. However, with the purchase, obviously, you're seeking approval to, to, to purchase all at one time, obviously, and, and uh, resell at the end of its use. Obviously, we wouldn't, if we, if we approve this, we obviously have no. Expenses related to this to approve in, in subsequent years. That's, that's, okay. that's correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Others? I guess when you when you put it together like that and you package it up and um, you know I agree with Councillor Papp, it, it seems like it's the it's what has to be done. And if there's a possibility of uh, of uh, maybe selling it a couple years down the road and recover some of those costs, this is the way to do it as opposed to a lease where it just gets you know. You just keep paying for the lease. So I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item has been moved by Councillor Ribiak, second by Councillor Drelli. The Council received the issue summary report regarding the erection of wall signs and awning signs on the new LCBO store, and the Council accept and approve the request by Gould signs and that Gould signs be allowed relief from the sign bylaw to erect signs <coughs> for the LCBO in accordance with the schedules appended to the report. Any discussion, questions, comments? Councillor Lane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I seem to have a lot of trouble with this particular thing, and uh, I guess my question would be when this the building was built and when the uh, <coughs> All the approvals and what have you went out for them to get a building permit and all the various things that were required. Were these people aware that there's a sign by law in town? We can answer that, uh, Mr. Glover. Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, unfortunately, this this approval uh, predated me. Um, but in talking with the applicant, actually, perhaps I'll, I'll, I'll bring another topic forward to answer this question. Um, in looking at this design of the building and the signs, um, it doesn't fully meet town's new ideas of what the downtown master plan, the East Pond Hill, should, should perhaps look like. We've approached, or I've approached the applicant uh, to discuss this matter with them. And I've dealt with the applicant uh, in a previous job with Ms. Pally that I worked at. And uh, they are very willing to sit with us and uh, uh, talk with the LCBO and see if there's improvements we can make to these signs. In saying that, uh, I believe they understood that there were sign permits required, uh, but they didn't know what the signs were at that time. So through this process, we're hoping to get improved uh, signage, uh, perhaps lifestyle murals, et cetera, on this wall to, well, for lack of better terms, jazz it up <coughs> to better meet the, our, our goal, our future vision of what this area should look like. Thank you. Does that help, Councillor? Anything further? Well, it helps, but at the end of the day, what are we saying? That we want we want this thing to be approved as it's submitted to us? The application um, is is not poor. Uh, it, it's it's uh, better than what they have now. Um, their expectations that they were given was given under a previous planning director, um, and they were given commitments and, and uh, expectations of what they had to meet. <clears throat> I'm, I'm asking them to go above and beyond what their expectations are, and they're willing to sit with us to see if they can, if we can get better resolution uh, going forward. Thank you, Councillor. If I may, yeah. Based on, based on what I'm seeing here, they're allowed a certain number of signs. They want to increase that by more than twice. They want signs on every facet of the building, and uh, you know, I, I think. Uh, my point has been made before is that I think we're doing exactly what we don't want to do but with the downtown stretch and that's making a 
a bunch of neon signs and whatever that are not attractive at all, in my opinion, at least. So uh, I'm not supportive of uh, this as, as it stands. Okay. Thank you very much. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Glover, you want to respond to that? Uh, go Please. ahead. Um, I, I do hear what you're saying, and I do hear it's a stretch of, above the sign bylaw. Unfortunately, um, this this development has a very blank wall, um, and and we need to we need to jazz it up somehow. Um, otherwise, it has a fortress appearance uh, of sorts. This this sign that they're proposing here, a number of signs, although it doesn't doesn't fully resolve the issue, uh, I believe um, uh, through my review that I would support this or perhaps a revised application as opposed to, to, to adhering to our bylaw as it stands now for this specific development. Okay, thank you. Others, uh, Councilor Ribiak, <coughs> I think you were first, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and the, the, the planner, I think, has, has um, has uh, forecast, I think, a little bit of my, my comment with regard to this. We are being asked to look at a sign uh, to make a, a building which is currently unattractive. The planner called it a fortress. I think of it as a prison in which little bottles are trying desperately to escape. But, but a prison <laughs> appearance that, that really is not in keeping with, uh, sorry, that was the, the thought that went through my mind and needed to be expressed. I don't know why. I apologize to anyone who uh, found that inappropriate. But uh, the, the, the walls, as, as we see them uh, along Highway 20, are, are, are not attractive. And, and the signs that are being proposed are not, in my opinion, going to make that building any more attractive. I think that uh, if, uh, if, if the uh, retailer is, is willing to sit down with, with our, our planning staff and talk about ways in which to make uh, the building conform in, uh, more to the to, to the values and ideals, perhaps that we we are able to express them. Then within that, they may be able to find signage that is that's consistent and appropriate, and, and maybe something that uh, I would be able to support. But the way it, what, what, what they're proposing uh, to put on the building as it currently appears, I I, I, I couldn't support it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councilor Durling. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Mr. Glover. I if we approve this tonight, then they they have permission to do that. And if, in fact, your uh, conversation with them to jazz things up fails, we're stuck with what's here, right? Mr. Glover. <clears throat> if you approve the application that stands tonight, in my opinion, there is some improvement to the wall as it stands now. If you don't approve it, you're, you're, not, you're going to get less signage on the walls, so you'll have more of the, the brick area. The discussions I'm going to have with the applicant go above and beyond site plan approval and perhaps bylaw, uh, sign bylaw. Yeah. I think uh, they have been good applicants to this point. They have been honorable in what, they, what our expectations are, what we approve them to do and what they are doing. Um, I'm asking them to go above and beyond what we've approved or, or, or the council's approved or, or, or what the expectations are. I think to, to say no to, to them um, perhaps may end that discussion. I don't know. So going. Through you again, Mr. Mayor, is there a possibility to defer this right. so that we can look at whether or not these discussions will be fruitful? and? At that particular time, we may be able to put something better together, and that would in, be a win-win for them, us, and, and the public, and the and the appearance of the building. Or is there an immediacy that they have with this, Mr. Glover? The applicant uh, does wish to move very quickly on this uh, to open and get a finished product for the customers. Uh, in saying that, if if this was deferred one cycle, I think um, there would be room, perhaps, to maneuver and to get uh, perhaps a better design. Okay, thank so you. <laughs> if, if we deferred it tonight until our next meeting, which is September the 2nd, would that give you Order time? Or to the 15th, which would you prefer? Or to the 15th? I think actually um, a one month cycle is what I was referring to. I, I need to meet with the applicant. They need to meet with LCPO, and then we need to have another meeting after the fact. So I don't know if we can do that within a two week span. Um, I would recommend a one month cycle if I could. 
uh, if the council feels that it should be sooner, um, I can see if I can push things forward. Okay. I just want to give them enough yeah. time, and that's, that's yeah. why I suggest that I'm thinking if there is an immediacy that <coughs> we want to go as quickly as possible, but if it's going to take you time to go through all the administrative yeah, loopholes that you need to do, and certainly leave the time. But I, I would prefer to, uh, if it's not going to harm negotiations, to defer this until such time as we can get the uh, yeah. fruitfulness of your discussion with the LCBO. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you, you. Mr. Mayor. If I may add, um, if Council uh, feels that uh, the need we can defer uh, one month cycle or sooner, uh, if I can right. get things resolved before then. Okay. Thank you. That's what I was thinking as well. Um, <coughs> others, so who wants to, Councilor Papp, you want to make that? Let's do it. Okay. A motion to defer uh, for one cycle or sooner to come back with the appropriate <coughs> Uh, information and recommendation for okay. the bill. Okay, so let's move by Councillor Papp, second by Councillor Durley. There being none, I call mm -hmm. the question on the motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Uncle Me gets the motion. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, children. When it comes back, you can uh, you can get your name on the okay. the first motion. Okay, so that's <laughs> deferred for uh, one cycle, which I guess might be the 15th of September. Uh, with the hope that uh, <coughs> staff can have discussions with the LCO at that time. Thank you very much. The next item has been moved by Councillor Durley, seconded by Councillor Ribiak, that the issue summary report regarding the feasibility of developing <coughs> a CAT bylaw for the Town of Pelham be received, and that Council direct the bylaw division to further develop an education program to assist citizens in dealing with our feline friends. Questions, comments? Councillor King, Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate the thorough report that has been put forward by Mr. Genesee, and I just would like clarification on a couple of things. Um, as I read through his report, I'm, I believe that the municipalities that have such a bylaw um, are having that bylaw enforced by the SPCA, so it's not actually tax dollars within the municipality that are being utilized um, directly to enforce it. Um, so I'm wondering, given that, um, when Mr. Genesee met with the SPCA, whether they provided him with any data um, as to the actual number of complaints that they responded to and if there were any outcomes as a result of that. Mr. Chief? Um, SCBA, S, the uh, SPC. Main Society, um, doesn't respond to CAT complaints. Uh, they don't have the resources. The only uh, CAT complaints they'll go to are injured or sick or mistreated animals. But regular CAT complaints, they don't have the resources or the money to do it. So they don't even respond to them. OK. Then. That answers the data question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Gurley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I and mean, this has always bothered me, dogs need to be licensed every year and cats need to be licensed once in a lifetime. Is there some rationale behind that? Chief? Mr. Mayor, uh, we found that it's, um, the whole issue is really skirted. Uh, they really don't want to address, address it straight up. Um, it's very difficult um, cat, there's, uh, that you can't identify who owns the cats. Um, <coughs> they, if you look at the way they do dog licenses now, right, currently right now, there's a gentleman going around knocking on doors, renewing the dog licenses. So your dog's there in the house, he sees there, he hears the dog barking. Um, there's no, they just said they cannot do a census on the cats. They don't know where they come from. They can't prove who owns them. Um, it would be very, very difficult to, so the once in a lifetime, when they come out of the, maybe when they're bought or they're, the owners first acquire them and they can give them a license, but they just don't really want to address this. It doesn't, there's, as we said in the, in the report, we, there's three municipalities that do have a cat bylaw and none of them enforce it because it's just virtually impossible to do it. Thank you, Councillor. And that's the other question I had, like the Humane Society can charge dog owners for allowing the dogs to go loose, but they can't for cats because nobody wants to enforce it. Does that, they just don't want to do it? This, this is the whole issue behind it? Uh, you know, the biggest issue is they can't prove who, who owns the cats. And if you, 
Um, first of all, you just can't trap a cat. You have to go to the Humane Society and rent one of their proper traps, so it's humane. When you do trap a cat, you have to prove whose cat is it, it, it belongs to. And then the owners basically view cats as discarded um, pets. They don't have any responsibility to them. If you get your dog picked up by the pound and you have to go pay a fine, people are a attached to dogs. They'll do anything. For, but when it, the, This is a mean site telling us this, that when it comes to cats, the owners they just won't come pick them up. Just go forget it. You can have them now. So there's, they're, dis they're a discarded pet, unfortunately. Thanks, Chief. And just one other question. Could you perhaps <coughs> give us a little insight as to what this education program is going to look like? Mm -hmm. uh, a couple ideas that we'd like to do uh, address on the website. Um, we'd like to put a pamphlet together and basically address um, how to take, you know, address or take care of your cat, um, some of the problems that it would pose to neighbors if you just let it run free all the time, um, methods to keep them out of your gardens and your flower beds through, you know, whether it's citrus or ammonia or something like that. So basically, the educational way to be like a physical pamphlet and our website. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Others? I, I, um, I appreciate uh, what the Chief's saying when, when, I, when I first heard this, you know, similar to some other discussions we've had around the table on other issues, it was sort of posed to us is how might we have a cat bylaw now we're seeing that the cat bylaw doesn't doesn't work so it's really the the problem that's before us is how might we assist um, residents with cats that go into their yards and so we've heard a few a few solutions ammonia um, I asked a, a vet friend uh, who deals only with with cats citrus the chief mentioned lavender planting lavender um, so we know how to attract cats, which is put out food or plant catnip or whatever, and this is sort of the reverse, right? Um, so I think, you know, it's wise for us to look at that problem uh, as opposed to trying to put something in place, which is what, what other municipalities have done, that they just can't enforce. They, they, and, and I think it's, it's interesting and right, Chief, when, when it says um, that by passing a cat bylaw, um, some people think that it's it is a cure to any cat issues, and and you sort of raise expectations, whereas really, you, one can't do anything. <coughs> it's, it's very 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 difficult to to enforce. Um, so, you know, I am in favor of this education program and assist citizens in dealing with cats. Where, um, whether it's plantings or fencing or whatever it is. Um, so I guess the only question I have, Chief, is will you be speaking with, you've already spoken with the uh, Humane Society, will you be speaking with vets or something that kind of experts on cats to get a little bit more information on uh, some tactics, uh, tactical uh, ways in which to deal with the, our dogs. feline friends? <laughs> I guess so, Mr. Mayor. Um, if you'd like if you give us that direction, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll contact vets, but we'll go back to the Humane Society, we'll talk to other municipalities. We'll really kind of exhaust our resources and go and find out exactly what we can gather and put together and, and provide mm -hmm. the best educational documents and information. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Are we ready for calling of the question? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. We look forward to hearing the results of that, uh, that work and uh, that education program to assist residents in this area. It is an important issue for many. Uh, specifically, if there is a cat in one backyard, it's something they want to deal with. So, good that we're moving ahead to assist. Thank you. It's been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Drilly. The Council of the Town of Pelham, having given due consideration to the following bylaw, do now read a first, second, and third time and do pass the same. And the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign and seal the bylaws. Bylaw 3530 being a bylaw to amend. Bylaw 3516, being a bylaw to confirm various appointments to the Architectural Design Advisory Committee for the Town of Pelham. Bylaw 3513, or sorry, 3531, being a bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw 1136, as amended for lands located on the west side of Cream Street, south of Chandler Road, legally described as concession 13, part lot 12 and 13, which is at uh, 380 Cream Street. 
Bylaw 3532 being a bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw as amended for lands located on the north side of Foss Road, west of Church Street, legally described as Part Lot 19, Reference Plan 16, NP 70359R 6031809 Foss Road to site specific RV2 251. And bylaw 3533 being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement with 1898262 Ontario Inc. for lands located at 156 Highway 20 West, legally described as Plan 59, Part Lot 116 RP 59R3555 Part 1. Any comments, questions? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Riviak that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time and passed. Bylaw 3534 being a bylaw to adopt, ratify, and confirm the proceedings of Council of the Town of Pelham and its regular meeting held this evening. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Riviak that this regular meeting of Council be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for Tuesday. September 2nd, 2014, unless sooner called by the mayor, Tuesday because of the Labor Day holiday. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. We'll take a brief five-minute break. Thank you.